How do the concepts of sustainability and self-reliance relate to beekeeping? I recently saw a video on natural beekeeping and it really resonated with me. In this video, I'll cover my beekeeping progress and also discuss how I will implement some of the natural beekeeping principles on our farm. Self-reliance means lowering your dependence on infrastructure and supply chains out of your control. At the end of this video, I also have three bonus clips on DIY beekeeping supplies and equipment, each in its own separate chapter. Hello, I'm Hein, and if this is your first visit to this channel, my wife and I are building an off-grid homestead on bare land in the southern part of South Africa. Please feel free to browse our other videos. Before I continue, I'd like to give a big shout out to our subscribers. After our previous video, we hit 100 subscribers. Thank you very much. In my previous beekeeping update, I shared that a swarm of wild bees occupied my empty hive that I put out next to our little dam. This is in line with the first principle I set myself. I will grow my apiary by catching wild swarms or through wild bee removals. I will do what I can to keep the bees happy and comfortable, but if they should swarm, that is okay. They're not my bees, they just stayed with me for a while. Since my previous update, I've done two removals for people in the community. One was very recently and the other some time ago. That colony absconded from my apiary, leaving me with just a small number of bees in the hive, which I then combined with my first hive. That double brood box also have a honey super, which is almost full of honey and about 50% capped. Remember, we are in the southern hemisphere and it is now summer year. I have two more removals to do in the coming week. One of them is from a chimney with very limited access. And I had to build a bee vac to accomplish that task. You can see that in the bonus clip at the end of the video. I'm using conventional Langstroth hives at the moment. As you can see from the footage, my first hive is relatively aggressive compared to what I see on YouTube, but we are in Africa, so we're dealing with it. I do a hive inspection every two weeks, and after the heavy rains earlier this year, we had a massive nectar flow and the bees built like crazy. Lately, the rate has slowed down, but we see progress at every inspection. The other principles of natural beekeeping I aspire to are as little intervention as possible and avoiding chemicals as far as possible. But I'm new to this and I'm still learning from the bees. I do intend to split the double brood box once the second box is well built up. This might, however, only be after the winter. Well, this is it for this update. Enjoy the three bonus clips following and see you again in the next video. In this section, I'd like to share how I make smoker fuel for my bee smoker. I use old cardboard like pizza boxes or shipping box. Um, and recycle that into a handy cartridge of which I can have a few in my bee box and make this to the size to just fit into the bee smoker and it's fairly easy to just light fit into the box and get it going it burns for quite some time as well and it's fairly simple I cut my cardboard box to approximately 12 centimeters almost 5 inches and that fits well into the into the bee smoker which is just short of six inches high and then I just start rolling it up as I get to the end I fit in the next piece keep rolling it keep rolling it and as I get to the end I just fasten it with a piece of sticky tape so all you need cardboard box, stick it tight, a pair of scissors, cut it to size, that's about the size, and then I just fasten it. The sticky tape burns away, and it's fairly straightforward. 
there's another cartridge. So I can have several of these and never run out of fuel. In our area, there's not a lot of grass. So a lot of people, beekeepers use grass and they just take it from the land. Um, we don't have that. Um, our uh, um, natural vegetation is a lot more hardy than grass. So in order to have hay or something like that, I would have to buy it. And for this, we always have extra cardboard. We recycle it into the compost heap, but I use a lot of it for bee smoker fuel. And I can have a quick reload cartridge. In this next insert, I'd like to show how I made my homemade bee vac out of parts and, and things that I had lying around, except for the pipes which I had to buy. I use a normal domestic vacuum cleaner in the back as my power source, which means I will need um, AC supply on, on the site, but I can do that with my solar setup. And basically the problem with a, a vacuum cleaner, a normal um, vacuum cleaner, is that the suction is much too strong. Um, so you want to be able to suck up the bees, but you don't want to kill them or damage their wings or something when they get into the chamber. Um, where, where you, you collect the bees. So that's um, the challenge, is to slow down the suction in the bee vac. And what I've done is I used a normal 25 liter, I think it's a five gallon pail or bucket, and um, I used that as my chamber. I've got some PVC fittings at the bottom, and I've got some pool cleaner hose, which I can um, put into one into the other to get the length of, of hose that I need. This is just the friction fit into this PVC fitting, which goes into the bucket, and this I can then use to vacuum the bees. Inside, the, I need to slow down the suction. So the pipe to the vacuum cleaner goes out the top. But then what I've done is I've taken an old dustbin, office dustbin, with a small grid, and just Cut it off a little bit because it was too long and then used old off-cut thin plywood um, to fasten it because this is polypropylene and nothing sticks to polypropylene. No glue or silicon sticks to polypropylene. PVC cement does not stick to polypropylene. So what I've done is just with self-tapper screws and a, a ring of off-cut plywood, I've bent open the, um, the metal grid and it is just uh, fastened in there. So this divides the suction power of the vacuum cleaner over this entire area. So the bees won't get sucked into it because the, the suction through this grid is not strong enough to, um, to damage the bees. I've also found that the suction at the tip of the pipe is actually quite strong. So I've ventilated the top of the bee vac with some extra holes to slow down the airspeed at the tip of the pipe. The bees get sucked into this um, chamber, they don't get into the vacuum cleaner and uh, when I'm ready I just can just take off this and dump the bees into the hive. And this is my homemade um, bee vac that was made and the only parts I had to buy was one or two PVC fittings and these pool hoses that I use as extensions to get to the, the site where I want to suck up the bees. In this last insert, I'll show you how I make my foundation strips, beeswax foundation strips. In South Africa, plastic foundation is not big. Most beekeepers use beeswax foundation, and they either use full sheets of beeswax foundation or starter strips like this. This is very common. So this is what I use. I make my own foundation strips, and let me show you how. So here I have some molten beeswax. I've got my silicone mold. And all I do is to pour a strip. My beeswax. And I gently lower the mold onto the strip. I'm not trying to cast a complete sheet of foundation. I'm just trying to do a strip. Typically, the strip is wide enough that I can do two of these little strips in the, um, in the frame. Here you can see what a commercially procured strip of beeswax foundation 
um, looks like versus what my homemade strip looks like. Now all that remains is to take out the foundation, just lift the mold on the one side, repeat on the other side, perfect it broke a little bit but there you can see my strip of beeswax foundation I can now cut these and insert it into the um, into the frame my experience is that the bees actually recycle this wax that they start taking it apart and rebuilding comb from scratch so it doesn't need to be perfect 